can you hear me? All right, good. Uh, all right, I guess I can do without the clicker. So my name is Mayur Thakur. I uh, uh, lead the uh, analytics team in compliance at Goldman Sachs. And as of this now, at uh, this point, I'm the person standing between you and lunch. So, <laughs> so I'll try to keep on time. Um, clicker? And a mouse. Um, so, uh, there's a lot of machine learning talks, uh, great talks all. Uh, mine is a little bit different, and what I'm going to, uh, the thesis of my talk is that uh, in order to do machine learning, uh, you need to really understand data and build these data pipelines, right? So, if you really want about to, to hear about machine learning, maybe you can have lunch now. But, uh, okay, so before I get started, I'll just say what a surveillance is. Uh, so I run the surveillance analytics team. A surveillance is a, an algorithm implemented in code and running in production that, to a first degree of approximation, takes a large amount of data, let's say 100 million trades, and picks out a few things uh, that look suspicious to the algorithm, okay? So that's what you want to uh, keep in mind when I say surveillance, that's what it means. Uh, if you think of uh, ex actual examples of surveillances, uh, we have things like insider trading surveillance or uh, market manipulation surveillances. Um, and I'll give you an example uh, in, in a few slides. Okay, uh, let's see. So uh, clearly in, in order to uh, build these surveillances, there's machine learning and AI and all that stuff involved. Uh, this talk is not about that. Uh, what this talk is, as, as I was saying earlier, is the central thesis is in order to build those, we need a pipeline, we need to do the fundamentals right, we need to understand the data, and that's what this talk is about. And uh, what I'm talking about is the last about year, year and a half of effort uh, uh, that my team has put in. All right, so uh, just a bit more context. Uh, a lot of you probably hear the news. Uh, the top part of the, oh, sorry, the top part of this slide shows uh, actual headlines uh, from about a year ago in, in the last year or so, and uh, you can read yourself. Uh, the numbers are uh, are large, uh, which means that the amount of fines that institutions, uh, uh, financial institutions, get are pretty large. So. What surveillances do uh, in, in our context is we manage reputational risk, uh, which is uh, risk to the firm uh, uh, due to potential loss of uh, reputation, which can uh, lead to uh, fines or also lead to uh, loss of businesses, so on and so forth, right? The bottom part of the slide just shows a set of uh, regulators that regulate uh, financial institutions. It's a subset. It's not the complete set, all right? so. Assuming that you, you're convinced that the stakes are high. Um, I'll talk about the surveillance platform that we have built, but before we do that, uh, I just want to uh, lay down a few technical challenges. Um, and none of this is uh, unique to us, but my belief is the combination is reasonably unique, the combination of this with the industry we are in, uh, which is the financial industry. Uh, so. We have a lot of diverse data and formats, and I will specifically talk about uh, formats, right? So we get the firm's data, all of the data, but it comes from different parts of the organization. Uh, we are in a large organization, as, as are a lot of you. Uh, so it could be SQL files, or flat files, or HDFS files, proprietary formats, you name it. Um, the size is uh, obviously an issue, uh, and uh, for example, we'll have about a billion pieces of text per year. Uh, these are, uh, I'm talking of emails, uh, Bloomberg chats, um, other pieces of text as well. Um, we have a, a large, we have built a large, uh, large-ish. Uh, Facebook is here, so I should not say large, but one billion uh, edges in, in the graph, so graph is reasonably large. Uh, we have hundreds of millions of trading events and billions of uh, market data events. Right? So trading event is what is uh, a Goldman event, and market data is what is across uh, the market. 
Um, so one unique thing that we have, or semi-unique thing that we have, is data from past can change. What do I mean by that? Is if you, we got a trade, then uh, there was something wrong with the trade, someone called manually, uh, someone corrected manually, and so that will cause a cascade of changes, so something that was not, uh, 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 that was not flagged could now be flagged. Uh, the fourth bullet here says that we need our surveillance decisions to be debuggable. So again, our surveillance is flagging these outlier events. We need it to be de debuggable for various reasons, uh, one for ourselves, but also regulators can come and ask you, why was a trade on, you know, two years ago not flagged? And we need to be able to answer those questions. Um, typically, uh, it's, we don't need it to be real time, but often we need guarantees that it should finish in you know, T plus one. So if there was a trade today, we need to make sure that we run all our stuff by tomorrow, okay? All right, so uh, with that said, here is uh, the high level architecture that we have come up with. On the left side of the slide, I don't have a clicker, uh, I don't have a thing, but anyway, on the left side of the slide, all right, I'll just say the left side of the slide. You see all these data sources that we get, right? So as I was saying, it could be from any team at Goldman Sachs, uh, and, and we are the kind of the largest consumers of data across Goldman. Uh, it could be SQL, flat files, HDFS, some proprietary formats, so on and so forth. And what we really want to do is what is shown at the uh, right side of the slide, what, we, what is called alerts, right? So we want to pre-process all of that and run our surveillance shown in green there. It's called surveillance one, but surveillance one, surveillance two, surveillance N, and we want to produce these alerts that is then looked upon by some human being. And they'll say, you know, they'll investigate it and say, okay, uh, benign, or we need further action, so on and so forth. That really is the flow. So our job is this algorithmic stuff, and then someone who is kind of an investigator will then look at these alerts. Uh, and what we have shown here is because of the number of different say, data sources we have, we have to build these pre-processing pipelines uh, that produce what I call flattened data. The reason I call flattened is because uh, the input data may not be flattened. You could have like thousands of sources, and what I really want to build are those you know, blue cylinders on the, which is called flattened, and I want to build few of those. Just to give you an example, I want to have one table, literally one HBase table, and if you don't know HBase, it doesn't matter, one HBase table that has all the orders across the firm, uh, whether it's you know, equities or futures or different products, and across the globe, whether it's US or EMEA or, or, uh, or, or Japan, so on and so forth, right? So I want to build a few of those uh, flattened structures, tables, Another example is one of those tables will have uh, all the e-communication, right? Billions and billions of pieces of it. Whereas on the left-hand side, that's not how we get it. Now, the purple stuff, which I call bookkeeping, and you may not be seeing it because it's purple, uh, is, uh, remember I said that we want uh, the last two bullets. We want the decisions to be debuggable, and we want uh, time guarantees. So that's like a finite state machine. It keeps track of all these different data sets, where our surveillance one is, what has it processed, what has it not processed, so we can go back in time and debug it. So it's kind of the control master for all of these different things. And on the right-hand side, I'm not gonna to talk too much about the alerts themselves, but there'll be some UI where it produces these alerts and people can go and look at them, investigate, so on and so forth, okay? So this is kind of the, uh, the structure we came up with, just a little bit more detail. All of this stuff is in, uh, in, in Hadoop, essentially, right? Because it's not real time, all of these are basically implemented, all the, all the boxes, all the rectangles are basically implemented as, uh, as uh, MapReduce, okay? So really simple. Okay, so I'll give you one example of uh, a surveillance that we've built. Uh, so that's more real. Uh, it's, uh, it's called, uh, the, the, the vector is called spoofing, and what spoofing is, at the very simple uh, uh, explanation of spoofing is, you want 
the market to go in a, as a trader or, you know, you want the market to go in a certain direction. Um, so in this case, the red triangle, this is where it gets tricky, the red triangle uh, on the very left is you put in a sell order. So let's say you wanted to sell 300 shares of XYZ and you wanted to uh, uh, sell it at a higher level than the market is, right? So the green level is where you could sell at, but you want to sell at a higher level. So what you could do in certain circumstances, uh, uh, if you're a certain type of participant, uh, you could put what are called spoof orders uh, or fake orders. Uh, these are the green triangle at roughly the 100 uh, millisecond uh, mark. Uh, that indicates those, those buy orders. So on the other side, you put buy orders, that indicates the market that there is a buyer, the market reacts, the price goes up, and then your red triangle gets filled. So remember, on the left side, there was no fill because you were asking for too much, uh, but uh, around the 400 second, uh, millisecond mark, uh, it gets filled. And then remember, you just put in those green triangle uh, orders, they have not yet executed, and you cancel them. That's what the X's are on the right side around 400, between 400 and 500, okay? So you really wanted to do the red, you put in these green triangles um, as, as fake orders, you didn't want them to execute, and then you cancel them after the red is executed, okay? In the right set of scenarios with the right, uh, uh, within the right time framework, uh, this is possible to do. So now what you have done is, uh, you know, this is called spoofing or spoofing the market. So it's not just theoretical. Um, a guy called Navinder Singh Sarao, he was accused of spoofing uh, and even contributing to the uh, flash crash of uh, 2010. Uh, he recently pled guilty uh, and he uh, allegedly made uh, uh, millions of dollars in illegal profit over these years. Uh, so yes, uh, it's illegal. Um, and what we wanted to do was to build a model for this. Um, so this is where, maybe this is my machine learning slide, but really I have six pieces of training data. So we look at, looked at all regulatory uh, enforcement, so all the cases that we had uh, available. And uh, you see the first line says the Sarao case, then the whole brother's case, whatever, right? And so those are the pieces of data. I remember I told you we had like hundreds of millions of trades and billions of market data events per day. And now we have six things to build a model from. So what we identified was certain common factors uh, in indicative of spoofing behavior, right? So what we said is uh, you would need to have a false impression of demand uh, and when we checked around these cases, uh, what we call order imbalance, and if you go back, what, what you'll see is that the ratio of the red to the green is lopsided. So you would need to put much more green in order for the market to move, essentially. Right? So that's the order imbalance. If it's equal, then you probably won't succeed in spoofing. That, and we, that was our hypothesis. Turns out it's actually true if you look at specific clients in those cases. Uh, then the uh, order imbalance was uh, most of the time was greater than 2.5. And the second thing you need to do, because you don't want these green orders to execute, is after around 400 second, millisecond in this case, after the red executes, you need to cancel your orders. So we said, okay, let's look at the odd, uh, cancellation time post execution. And yes, we saw that in most cases it was less than a second, except in one case which was about five seconds. So those are the two factors that went into our, uh, uh, in addition to other things, those are the two factors that went into our spoofing model. This isn't really the point of the talk, uh, except to uh, give you a view of uh, an example of a spoofing case, and to show that in many cases, even though you have a lot of data, it's a very lopsided data, and we needed to kind of hand build this, uh, this model, okay? But now comes how to implement that, and as I was saying, the, the, there's a huge amount of data. We, a priori, we have to assume that everything is a potential spoofing case. We need to run it through our uh, algorithm, and then it will produce a few alerts. So what we did, this is basically the, the, similar to a slide I presented earlier. So we have orders coming. So these are, these are the, like the, the, the red and green stuff that you saw on the left side of the slide. 
and then you have executions coming. These are when it actually gets executed in the market. Uh, and then we have these market events, right, which are billions and billions of uh, uh, market data. And as I was saying, what we have is all these processing pipelines. These are like MapReduce uh, implemented code, and they flatten the order so that now each row in the first table is everything we know about order one, two, three, four, five, right? Uh, each row in the execution table is everything we know about execution four, five, six, seven. And each row in the market data is everything we know for one second, for example, uh, not every tick, but for one second for one ticker in the market, okay? But more than that, we need now need to join, right? We need to join hundreds of millions of rows with billions of market data points so that we can get a view of how the market was at the time of that red triangle with the green check, right? The, 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 what we call the execution time. Around that time, what was happening? Around that time means around that, you know, in the, in the let's say, one second below, before, and one second after. What was happening? Who was, who was executing? Who was putting in orders? So on and so forth. And that's the join that we needed to do, and that's why we needed to, that's the most expensive step, joining all this stuff. And I want to minimize the number of times I need to do the join, so that's what we, what we call related transactions. We do all this join, and we do it once, once every day, that is, and everything from that point onwards, whether it's our spoofing surveillance or our front-running surveillance, I'm not talking about that, or our NH surveillance, we'll use that, uh, we'll use that table, okay? Sorry. So if you look inside this table, what you see is everything we know about that particular execution, the red triangle with the check, uh, which means what orders were around here, what executions, what was the market looking at that time, okay? And what, once you have that, then every, uh, it's a very simple thing because literally at this point, every, or at least my uh, spoofing, um, my spoofing uh, algorithm is literally a map, not even a map reduce because every inf all the information I need is in that one row. It wasn't the, way, the case earlier, hence my point was we had to build all this kind of complicated um, um, processing pipelines. But once you do that, that becomes reasonably simple, even though um, the, the algorithm itself may not be that simple. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm going backwards. Okay, so this was my, uh, was, was the pitch. I'm saying, I, did, I wanted to solve the spoofing problem but I, we had to solve all of this kind of data issues first, and I have not even talked about the problems we have with the data. For example, sometimes the milliseconds are missing. So how, when you're talking about execute, executions in milliseconds, how do you deal with that? That kind of stuff, I've not even talked about that. But the one thing I do want to highlight is that we have created this platform. This is one example of a data pipeline I gave you. We have created this platform all in Hadoop, but that introduces another interesting problem now. Uh, one of the things we, can, we, we need to do is to keep it all bound in that, in that cluster, in that Hadoop cluster. The reason is some of the data we have is very sensitive. I can't really move it out of the data of, of, of that cluster. Not everyone has access to it, few people have access, so on and so forth. So what that uh, results in is now, let's say we have in the same cluster that you have this transactions data, you have email data as well. So all the firm's email, billions of pieces of text are there. Now, I want to search over it. For various reasons, we need to search over it. And um, now it creates a problem because now I can't use on Hadoop, at least we didn't know how to, and if someone knows, please get in touch with me, how to use Elasticsearch, which is the open source version of search, uh, over, over, over the documents that are stored in our cluster uh, at the scale that we have. So one billion documents uh, on a Hadoop cluster, and we needed to design a search engine over Yarn uh, that is fast and satisfies the various investigative uh, use cases. And there are unique challenges. I just mentioned one, you cannot move the data out. Uh, we also need to have very Goldman-specific signals like colloquial languages, uh, abbreviations, so on and so forth. And we have 
it's an unstructured and structured signals, right? If you think of email itself, the top part of the email is structured, the bottom part, the actual text is unstructured. Okay? And I promise this is my last slide. So, uh, and I don't want to go into all the details here because the details of how we do the search is, uh, is interesting, but probably subject to change. What I want to emphasize here is two things. One is the size itself. So the number of documents is about a billion. The number of index tokens is 500 billion, so half a trillion. Uh, and it runs, uh, it needs to run reasonably fast, so in sub-second latency. So we do like simple things like you have a slow index and a fast index. Uh, you have a ranker that hits both the uh, slow index and the fast index, uh, so on and so forth. Um, we needed authentication. Uh, we needed to, it to work on the same cluster that all our data is in, um, and the red light is blinking. So I'll stop here and summarize that we have a big data problem. The big data problem is uh, running surveillances over a large amount of data. In order to get to the machine learning part, we needed to build all these data pipelines uh, so that we could keep data in one place in a flattened format and then do, uh, the, and, and then do uh, our surveillances on top of that. Um, I think we are out of time, otherwise I'll have taken questions. Thank you.